A seesaw is a staple game in most parks and playground. It is so fun, especially when you have somebody to share with. Irvin and Hayden have started to play together much more, and so I thought it would be so fun if they have a seesaw in the backyard so they could hang out whenever they want. In this video, I'll show you how I made a bumblebee seesaw. This is a fun and easy project. It only took me a day to finish. Let's begin! Hi guys, my name is Fang. I'm a mom of two boys and make videos about mom's life and parenting tips. If you haven't, please click the subscribe button. To work on this project, you need a used tire which will act as the pivot point for the seesaw and a longboard where the children can sit on. Let's go find them! I've never worked with used tire before. I called a couple places and luckily one of the shop owners was gracious enough to give me a used tire for free. He even offered to put the tire in the back of the car for me. So nice! Back home, I unloaded the tire with some help from my little guy. Hayden has never seen a tire before, so he thought it was a swimming tube. It took me some time to convince him to give it back to mommy. Next, I unload a long plywood board. Now, I will load this board onto my work table. For the seesaw to be balanced, the tire will need to be at the center of the board. The board's length is 8 feet long, so I'll use a ruler to measure and mark the center at 4 feet. Then, I'll put the tire onto the center of the board and mark the left and right boundary so that I have a sense of how much space I will need for the seats. I love having the kids around when I work. It's springtime, so I decided to set up my work table in the backyard today so we can all enjoy the nice weather. Now we will measure the board to mark the cuts such that the seating areas will be curved in like this. This will allow the kids to rest their legs while they play. These measurements are important, so I took some time to carefully mark them. I absolutely don't want to have an off-balance seesaw. To mark the curves, I'll use a round object. This would fill a box has just the right size that I need. You just need to mark half a circle. If you don't have this wood fill a box, a plant pot will do. Just make sure they're on the same size on both sides. Now that I have all the markings, I'll clamp the board tight into the wood table to begin cutting. And here comes my favorite jigsaw, smooth like cutting butter. I've found that for woodworking, designing and measuring are the hardest part and also takes the most time. Once all the measures are done, cutting is very easy and relaxing. After each cut, I will sand the board thoroughly to get rid of the splinters. Sanding will also help me prepare the surface of the board for painting later. To create this pattern, I'll use two tapes to divide the board into even sections. Each section is 5 inches apart. The blue tape will help me paint individual sections with different colors without worrying about the paint spilling onto the nearby sections. For the big sections, I'll paint them yellow. As you can see, with the blue tape, I can move the brush freely without worrying about smearing it onto the next section. I use a brush in this project. But if you decide to paint the board with only one color, using spray paint will be faster. Remember to paint the side of the board as well. Now that the yellow sessions are done, I'll let them dry for about half an hour before I continue. After the yellow paint dry out, Hayden helped me peel out the tapes. He really enjoys doing this. Maybe he thinks these tapes are like stickers? Then, I paint the black stripes. I will repeat the steps by first adding blue tapes along the edges of the yellow stripes. And then, I'll 
paint the remaining sections with a black paint. Now all the paints have dry out. It's time to see the result of all the work. I think painting takes the most time because you need to wait for things to dry. But then, seeing the beautiful painted layers revealing themselves after each peel is just so rewarding. In order for the tire to be a staple pivot point, we need to cut it in half. I've never cut a tire before, so I first try using a reciprocating saw with a heavy duty metal cutting blade. So it turns out that the inner edges of the tire, which is called blade I think, are actually threaded with metal. The blade cut through it, but it just couldn't cut through the rubber. So I tried to put the tire upright, and it didn't work either. Ugh, how to cut this? So I guessed it's probably because the rubber was walking too much, and that made the saw useless. So I put in some clamps and try again, and again, and again. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll let my hubby finish the rest of the job. Mommy's gotta get some break too, right? And it's such a nice day today. It sounds like he's making a good progress. And here are the two halves of the tire. Now I'll paint it with the same black and yellow patterns of the board. First, we need tape. For the tire, make sure you align the tapes between the two halves so that the final patterns will be consistent among the two. To paint the tire, it's important to first apply a primer layer. I didn't have to use primer for the board, but without primer here on the rubber layer, the paint will not be able to stick to the rubber. After spraying the tire with primer, I'll spray on the yellow part. I love the glossy look of this paint. It totally transforms the look of the tire. And also, glossy finish is easier to clean compared to flat finish. After waiting for the yellow paint to dry, I repeat the steps to apply the black paint. However, this time I use all papers to fully cover the yellow parts. Because I'm using spray paint, I need to be extra careful here. I don't want any black paint to spread to the yellow parts. Now let's shake and spray. And ta-da! The result looks great! I'm very happy with this pattern and the glossy look. We will use wood blocks to attach the tire to the center of the board. To do that, I'll measure the width of the tire and cut some 2x4 wood blocks of the same size. Each half will need 2 blocks, so I have 4 in total. I will now clamp and attach the block to the ends of the tire using wood screws. It's been a full long day and it's starting to get dark, but I really want to finish this project for the kids to play tomorrow, so I stay and worked on it for a bit more. I've already had the board ready, so now I just need to attach the tires to the board. This step is straightforward. I just need to screw from the board to the wood blocks I added earlier in the tire. These screws are very strong, so they pull the tires and the board together very tightly. Finally, I've made some handles from the spare parts I cut out from the board earlier. Now, I'll attach these handles to the board so the kids can have something to grab. And we're done! It can stand on itself without tipping over. I think I can call this a success. It's really dark now, so I'll call it a day. Tomorrow, we'll see how the kids would like this. Here's our bumblebee seesaw. It looks so cute. Alright, I'll share with you a couple ways to play with this seesaw. We have the classic.
Eternal. The Surfer The Walk of Confidence The Romantic Bench I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you have other cool ideas to play with Seesaw. And if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. See you next week. Bye!